Hello everyone, happy October from Walt Disney World Magic Kingdom. On October 1st, 1971, 49 years ago today, Walt Disney World opened to the public. The very first park that opened was Magic Kingdom right here. Today is their 49th anniversary. Next year is the big 50th celebration. Of course, a lot of that has been altered now, but even with everything that's going on, I am here to wish Walt Disney World a happy anniversary. And I also have Haunted Mansion ears on because it's October and Magic Kingdom is decked out for the spooky season. We're gonna enjoy that too. Right when we enter the park, we've got the villains coming. <laughs> got a few hours I think a solid plan to celebrate the anniversary today is to try to do at least one opening day attraction in each land hey if we can do more than that a bonus but I think one opening day in each land that's our game plan let's do it I really wish that we could start today with a ride on the Walt Disney World Railroad but it's been down for refurbishment for quite a while and it's still gonna be quite a while before it reopens We're starting our day in Adventureland. There are three opening day attractions in this land. The Swiss Family Treehouse has been bringing joy to families for many years. In Disneyland, this has been rethemed, but we still have close to the original attraction. Of course, all original attractions have been changed through the years. None of them are in their exact opening day form, but let's take a walk. This is an attraction that is really nice to enjoy when it is not crowded. As much as I love seeing lots of people enjoying this, it's definitely more pleasurable when you're not being rushed through and you can take the time to appreciate the small details because this is all about details. You often hear people talk about how newer attractions tend to be more based on screens and other newer technology and that is true to a large degree. Now you've got new attractions based on new technology like Rise of the Resistance that are amazing and then you have others that in my opinion are too heavily screen based. I'm just a really big fan of practical effects, things that actually work and move, motion and details that are created and crafted to tell a story. I also love built environments that you can walk through and interact with to some degree. I mean, there's not a ton you can really touch or do in here, but you can experience it and sort of be immersed in the story that that attraction is trying to tell. What's interesting about the treehouse is it's not a ride. You don't get in a vehicle, you're not moved around, you're walking on your own two feet, and you can sometimes stop a little bit and appreciate the details, hear the organ playing, look at the books and artifacts on the table and see the way the family lived. Even look up there, look. They've got their rum. See, a nice supply of rum up there. Little things you might not notice when you're rushing through. Great way to start the day, I think, with a very, very classic attraction. Let's keep going. The Jungle Cruise is an opening day attraction here at Walt Disney World. It does undergo a holiday overlay during Christmas and they call it Jingle Cruise and that's a lot of fun. It's one of those rides that's just a classic always and we love it. Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room opened as the Sunshine Pavilion Tropical Serenade. It's been through quite a few changes through the years, but these happy birds have kept us entertained, singing and dancing for all of the years that Magic Kingdom has been open. Frontierland's beloved Country Bear Jamboree. Opening day fun. Eight minutes till our next show. Let's do it. Let's get on with the show. Al must be crazy. Yeah, we ain't going anywhere anyhow. We're kind of hung up here. <laughs> Give me a little intro there, Gomer.
attractions, Hall of Presidents, and Haunted Mansion, of course, my favorite. And of course, I would pick Haunted Mansion, but there's a 45 minute line, which I'm happy to see, because that means guests are here, and my favorite attraction is getting the love it deserves, but I'm gonna take a gamble and come back later and hope the line is shorter. Sometimes sometimes you gotta take a Disney gamble, and we're gonna, we're gonna head to Fantasyland and do the next thing, and then come back to Disney Gamble. That is, wow. Here in Fantasyland, we've got It's a Small World, Peter Pan's Flight, we've got Dumbo, the Mad Tea Party, and a Cinderella Castle, even though that's not a ride, it's, you know, an attraction in its own right. The facade for It's a Small World has these construction tarps up and these construction walls up too. And it's got a 30 minute wait, which, I mean, again, it makes me happy in a way because the crowds are back at Walt Disney World. And the rides that I love are getting love. It's just, oh wow, it's like a, a big shift, you know? For our Fantasyland opening day attraction, we're gonna do the Mad Tea Party. This is not a ride I normally do, so it's kind of special. It's one of those Disney rides that is so classic when you see like vintage photos of Disney World and Disneyland, you see people in the teacups. I actually haven't ridden this since 2019, so it has been a while. We could have ridden It's a Small World, we could have ridden Peter Pan's Flight, those are also opening day attractions, but we're just, we're going with a, a true classic. Plus, it's only 10 minutes. I love hearing the laughter on this ride. That is my favorite thing. Everyone is like laughing and cheering and having fun. I think I am in the mood for a tea party and a party requires a party. Yes. Care for a spot of tea, Nate? Party of tea. <laughs> I like that. Which one do we pick? Which one do we pick? This one. Right here. Bada boom. Bada boom. All right, let's get in this tiny thing. Close that door. We're all tightening. <laughs> Nate and I are both similar in that we don't spin the wheel. We don't want any more spin. One, One spin. One spin. Whee! Okay, spinning is a little bit of fun. Yeah, once you, it's like momentum. Once you start the momentum, it just keeps on spinning, but gently. You see the people behind us? They're spinning like mad. Oh, that is how you do it. Oh my gosh, they are really, really spinning. I already feel a little dizzy, do you? <laughs> this is like giggly fun. <laughs> oh, like, is okay. okay. The one thing I like about this ride too is that it's kind of short. Yeah. So like, you are spinning and as soon as you're like, well, we can't take it anymore, it ends. So you're good. <laughs> Now admittedly, the Tomorrowland Speedway is not my favorite attraction here at Walt Disney World, but it's still fun. And it opened October 1st, 1971 as the Grand Prix Raceway. And by my calculations, it's the only opening day attraction still standing in Tomorrowland. You know, it's funny, I was talking about the older rides being more tactile, more like immersive, more kind of like things you can touch and experience. And this ride, even though it has changed like most opening day attractions, it's very like noise, sound, smells, like all of your senses are sort of engaged in this. Oh yeah. And you're just like slammed in the face with like cars and this and that. And I don't know, I like it. There's something charming about it. Although I do wish they would change to electric cars. Hello. So one and one. Oh, right. Yeah. Number eleven, number twelve. Thank you. Righty, here we go. Okay. Thank you. All right. Here we go. Pedal to the metal. Pedal to the metal. Oh, no, 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 no. That's unacceptable. Let's get, let's get organized. 
organized here, people. All right. Woo! Come on, we can do better than this. Pedal to the metal! Tomorrowland Speedway! Let's see how Nate's doing back there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The car in front of me just stopped. What's he doing? He's looks like having a nice time over there. Let's go! We've done one opening day attraction in every land so far besides Liberty Square. Don't think I've forgotten. We'll get it, but I feel like I need a food break. And one place at Magic Kingdom I've never eaten at is the Plaza. Here we go, Plaza Restaurant. We've got a cavalcade, woo! I love the gold trim. I feel like the aesthetic of this restaurant is very like, Disneyland opening day feel vibes. We're seated in the atrium and it is so cute in here. This whole restaurant is beautiful. This building opened on October 1st with the Magic Kingdom and it was an ice cream parlor at first that later transformed into a restaurant. With its ornate gold trim and beautiful delicate details, the plaza is themed after a turn of the century restaurant and fits in with the rest of Main Street USA. I love the glow of the lamps and the mirrors and then the contrast of this light green atrium that we're sitting in with a view of the castle. Ta-da! Look at that. That's where I'm sitting and that's my view. Not too shabby. You know what's funny? Since moving to Orlando, I'm doing more of the little things that I used to kind of skip because even though I've been visiting Walt Disney World my entire life, I've lived in Florida my whole life, I lived in Miami and I was driving four hours to get here. So I would be here just basically for the weekend. I'd come in and I'd want to do my favorite things and then I'd have to drive back to Miami. Yeah, meatloaf time. Thank you so much. That was quick. No. I think that's good. Thank you. Yeah. We both got meatloaf. Oh, this looks nice. This is like a comforting meal. Oh, let's see how soft it is. Pretty soft. Pretty soft with potatoes and green beans. Let's try it. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, the sauce is everything. It is comfort in a plate. It's really juicy. It's really comforting and soothing. Really savory. The gravy is so, so, so good. It's just like, it's just good. It feels like, like a Christmas dinner or something. Except my Christmas dinners were more like lechon because, you know, grew up in a Cuban family. But what I imagine 
a Christmas dinner would be in some homes, maybe. My parents did still make meatloaf a lot, and they make really good meatloaf. I can't say this is better than my parents because I don't want them to get mad at me. But it's it's good. It's up there. What? I did too, though. Like I didn't even hold back. I seriously devoured it. You guys would be proud of me. I finished the whole thing. That was a really good meal. I really enjoyed the meatloaf. It was very hearty and very comforting. Like I just feel comforted. If you guys are keeping track, you know there's one more land we need to do an opening day attraction in, and I think foolish mortals, it's time. <laughs> to finish what we've started, complete the circle, and make sure that we complete our goal of doing an opening day attraction in every single land here at Magic Kingdom today. Okay. So we're back at Haunted Mansion and it is a 40 minute wait and they've reworked the line a little bit. Earlier it was all the way down by the riverboat and they've reworked it with a bunch of switchbacks and chains. So they've added in like, they, they're not added, these are here, but they kind of like attach them when it's time. They've attached all these lines to create an extended standby queue that I have not seen in place since the parks have reopened, not once. So this, this is definitely an indicator that the crowds are back for sure. Yeah, this is definitely interesting. I've, I don't think I've ever been in this part of the extended queue for Haunted Mansion. For as many times as I've been able to just walk on Haunted Mansion with no line, I still never take it for granted. And I never take for granted that it's a 45 minute wait for this attraction on many days and times. The time's gone down to 35 minutes, but it is still, as you can see, a queue full of switchbacks. Oh, and as I was saying, yeah, so it's an Omnimover system that's continually moving. So that actually keeps the crowds moving very, very quickly. It kind of like eats the crowds up and spits them out more quickly than a ride that has to stop more often. Mr. Toad, I loved Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. That was an opening day attraction here at Magic Kingdom. I remember it as a kid, it was like, one of my favorites, when I went to Disneyland for the first time, it was like the main thing I wanted to do. I just, I miss it so much. I'm a little bit closer to the mansion facade than we can usually get from the other side of the line, which is kind of cool. I love looking at all the little details, the storm drains, the storm gutters, the rain gutter, you know, the gutters. Oh, they have it like hidden. I think that the ring is here somewhere and they have it hidden. This whole part of the extended queue though has been closed off because it's interactive elements that you touch and they don't want people touching stuff right now. a lot of people have been asking yeah because it's an actual elevator in Disneyland we don't know if they would do a bypass or just social distancing and a few people at a time and that may be you know Disneyland has different challenges than Walt Disney World. Welcome, foolish mortals, to the haunted mansion. There's no telling what will happen when you get there. Mansion has undergone a few changes since its opening. So many scenes are very different from when they started, including the portrait hallway that we just went through, which now the Medusa photo actually takes a ride photo of you, puts it in your app, and you can download the photo. Oh. 
about the early concept for the Haunted Mansion and, and the different ideas that they had. It would have been a walkthrough. At one point, it was going to be a museum of the weird. There were many different concepts they went through to get where they are. And it's really cool just to see that like brainstorming process. And, and Walt was really into it, so it's neat. Another opening day attraction that I miss so, so, so much along with Snow White Scary Adventures. I loved both of those as a kid and I missed them. There's been a huge line for Memento Mori, the Haunted Mansion gift shop all day and now it's empty so we're walking right in. This is great, thank you. Guys, I bought this shirt recently. I wore it recently. I got it at um, World of Disney so. I'm seeing three new to me shirts. This Haunted Mansion one with all the portraits around it. This cute like crop top type of a shirt and then this a long sleeve shirt. It's not the spirit jersey, it's something different. Really cute. Memento Mori has its own pin now. I don't know if this is new because I've never seen it before. I think they deserve their own pin now. And I really like the design of it. We just paid our respects to the partner statue in front of Cinderella Castle and because of the Halloween season, they are now playing some spooky Halloween music mixed in with Main Street USA music and they were just playing Haunted Mansion music but then they switched back to Main Street USA music but it's just so cool to have that like little touch of extra theming. There it is, see, hear it? They're playing Haunted Mansion music on Main Street USA. Now that is cool. good seeing people so excited and cheering for all of those performing cast members and characters that we just saw. We all know that cast members are the heart of this operation. We all know what's going on in the news and I want to give you guys something positive, some Disney magic in your lives and not bring up the fact that the Grand Floridian Society Orchestra, Yeehaw Bob, 28,000 jobs, and so much more are being cut from Walt Disney World right now, like pretty much every industry. It's happening all over the country and all over the world. It's something we all know is happening, and I know everyone doesn't need another reminder, so the only reason I'm bringing it up is to give my love to all cast members, whatever you are going through. Know that we appreciate everything that you do for us, and we know that you are the heart of this company so I don't want to harp on it too much I know I got really emotional about the Grand Floridian Society Orchestra 
You guys know how I feel about live music and performance here at Walt Disney World. It is so important and so meaningful. And the cast members are too. You're all really important. And I just hope that we come out on the other side of this and things get better. The monorail actually did open with Magic Kingdom, but not this fleet. There was an original fleet, but the concept was here. I hope that you guys enjoyed spending Walt Disney World's 49th anniversary here in Magic Kingdom with me. It's also Epcot's anniversary and normally I would park hop over there, but there's no park hopping right now, so we had to go with the original Walt Disney World park that opened opening day, October 1st, 1971. We'll be here to continue celebrating milestones and giving our love to Walt Disney World, its cast members, its team, its performers, and all the wonderful characters that we know and love, and I'll bring you guys along for all of the fun. We also have a ton of cool stuff coming up. Of course, today is October 1st. It's Halloween season. There is so much going on. We're just gonna keep on doing as much as we can to bring you guys positivity and joy into your lives and days, and I thank you so much for bringing positivity and joy into my life and being here with me for all of the fun and adventures. So thank you guys so much for joining me, for watching, for your thumbs up, your comments, and all of your support and love. I'm sending you all lots of love. I'll see you for the next video. And until then, as always, stay enthused. Bye!